To my mind, there's two paths to framing Polaroid SX70 prints. Uh, the first one's to highlight just the image and make it the focus of the frame print. But today I'm going to delve into the second path, and that's a celebration of the iconic form of the SX70 photograph, which includes not just the image area, but the entire frame of the print as it's ejected from the camera. This is an industrial design form that anyone, anywhere can easily identify as Polaroid. And it's so embedded in our cultural psyche that it is still borrowed for countless advertising campaigns. Think about how rare that is. Now, the other interesting feature of the SX-70 is its tactility. When it's ejected from the camera, you, would, you grab it by its edges. Arguably, you can hold it while it develops. And 15 minutes later, you can pass it on to others to gaze upon the magic of an instant picture. There's a solidity to the object that feels really good in the hand. It's thicker, much thicker than you, your average photograph, and it seems to fit between your fingers just so, so naturally. Now, the first series I completed after being reintroduced to SX-70 photography in 2020 was from our windows. And right from the get-go, I was thinking about how I would eventually present these photographs if I was to have a show someday. And what I wanted to do was to emphasize the images, of course, but also the, also the iconic SX-70 form and the, the tactile, hand-holdable nature of an SX-70 photograph. So it struck me that my SX-70 photos needed to float above the mount board and to be held in place with a, a finger-like mounting strips or corners, almost as if I'm holding a photo in my hand and saying to the viewer, look at this. So the solution I came up with, which includes a few, few variations and a few experiments here or there, was to attach the SX-70 to an, an undercut piece of archival foam core using modified clear polyester mounting strips. Now the foam core and image package is then attached to a piece of conservation mat board sized to the frame. And then the frame has a spacer that separates the mat board and the image from the glass. And then when assembled, the photograph appears to float above the backing, held in place by a barely visible mounting strips, just like it was being held in my fingertips. So now let's take a look at how I did it and how you can do it as well. Okay, here we are with everything that I think we need, and I'm just going to run through it with you. Some of the stuff is going to be obvious, but uh, just in case, I thought I'd let you know. So first of all, you're going to need a cutting mat with a, some sort of a sharp uh, wolf -a knife style knife. Uh, you're going to need a, at least a 12 inch steel ruler. This is a 16 inch one. Um, you may need a, a bone folder. These are available from uh, art supply stores. Uh, You'll need this if, if you're using one of the products that I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, you, sh you will need a, a scrap SX-70 photo, as well as some one half inch to three quarter inch masking tape. Uh, you'll need a flaw, small flathead screwdriver or some sort of knife, and that's just to open up the little uh, steel tabs that are holding the frame together, the back of the frame together. You'll see that in a minute. Um, Particularly critical are some clear mounting strips, print mounting strips. Um, I've got two types that I'm using here. One is the Archival Methods uh, clear print mounting strips. These are uh, of two 10-inch uh, long strips. Uh, basically what they are is they're... They have a little clear plastic polyester strip here with some two-sided mounting tape and then the idea is that you would then take a photograph or some sort of art object that you're trying to conserve it would be slid under this and then you would use this to fasten it to the uh, mounting board and that way there's absolutely nothing um, except the acid-free polyester that's touching the art piece itself so anyways that has to be you can use these. That's what I'm going to be using for my um, tests right now. Uh, there is another possibility, and that's the um, archival mounting strips by Linaco. Now, the my archival methods. It's a, um, a company in the U.S. and uh, uh, for us in Canada, I know it's fairly expensive to get that stuff to us. Uh, the shipping costs can be quite quite high, and as well, if you're living in other countries. It might be easier to find these Linaco um, 
uh, see-through mounting strips. Lineco is a company that seems to be available pretty much everywhere. So that's another possibility. It requires a different technique um, and it has a slightly different look, but it's certainly a possible thing to use. And we'll t so we'll talk about those in a second about how to do uh, both of those. You're going to need some Scotch double-sided scrapbooking tape. This is uh, acid-free um, archival stuff that's available from Staples and others. It's readily available. Uh, you could, if you were doing a lot of framing, you might want to go into a 3M ATG Gold 908 adhesive transfer tape, but you need an applicator for that, and it's a little bit more high flute, and I'm not using that for my stuff. Now, probably the most critical thing that you have to do is to get yourself a, a frame. And what you're looking for is basically a, a display case or what might be called a shadow box kind of frame. And the idea is that you want a, a minimum of a three quarter inch spacer that, between the glazing and the mounting board at the back. Uh, this is one example. This is an eight by 10 inch studio decor fundamentals display case from Michaels. Uh, it's readily available at the, all these Michaels craft stores that are across Canada and the United States. Uh, it's quite a nice frame. You, the, this particular fundamentals frame comes in a, a pack of three and it's like uh, $25 Canadian for them. So it's a, it's a pretty good deal. It has a glass as well, which is kind of nice. They also make a nine inch by nine inch uh, shadow box that has a, it's deeper. And that frame is more like uh, the other frame I'm, I'm gonna show you. And that's this Ikea frame. It's called the Santa Head frame. Uh, I hope I'm pretty, well, I don't know if, how you pronounce a Santa Head, but anyways, it's called Santa Head. Uh, available from Ikea. It's nine and three quarter inches by nine and three quarter inches or 25 by 25 centimeters in size. So anyways, this is this is a, also a nice frame. Uh, it is extremely deep uh, and you could actually, instead of hanging it on the wall, you could just, it's broad enough that it will seal up on a shelf. It also has a little um, thing just to uh, have it on a desk as well. So that's a nice thing. The downside of this frame is that it has a um, an acrylic kind of frame or a plastic kind of frame on it, uh, very thin as well. Uh, however, it's not noticeable in this particular. It's fairly small frame, so you don't really notice it. So I'm living with it. These frames are fairly inexpensive. I think they're about seven dollars Canadian uh, each, so, um, and yeah. So that's that's what I'm going to be working with, anyways. Now. Once you've got your frame, then you're going to have to um, get a mounting board. And this is a four ply conservation mat board that's sized to the frame dimensions. Uh, in this case, it's sized to my match my Santa head, my IKEA frame. So you're going to need that. And again, I, I'm using conservation board. Um, again, I try to use uh, good conservation materials wherever possible, acid-free materials. Um, you're also going to need two pieces of, of acid-free foam core. Uh, these ones are about three inches by three and three quarter inches. Sorry, let me measure that again. So I think I changed the dimensions. No, these are actually two and a half by three and a quarter inches in size. And these ones have to be, you can get uh, foam core in two, two thicknesses. A 1 8 inch or a 3 16 inch. Uh, these are the 3 16 inch um, thickness, um, which I would probably recommend for this particular purpose if you can find it. Also, I'd recommend that you use an acid free foam core board, which has a, uh, uh, a better grade of foam um, and it also has a, um, uh, an acid free sort of paper covering instead of sort of the plasticky covering that um, a lot of uh, the cheaper foam core has. So anyways, that's the basic materials that I think you need. Oh, oh, one more thing that you do need is a a piece of also a piece of this is a uh, conservation board, uh, mat board, uh, and it the idea is you, you want to size it. It's just slightly smaller, slightly smaller than the the size of your Polaroid picture, and in this case, that size is. three and a quarter inches by about four inches in size. 
so just slightly smaller and when when we get all this is going to mount right behind of your polaroid picture uh it's thin enough so it will be invisible when it's floating but it's also uh it will become the mounting board where you attach your little uh your your mounting strips to it anyways so that's the materials now what we have to do is we have to put that aside uh we have to deal with these mounting strips because whether you use the uh, Lanico ones or the archival method ones, uh, they have to be adapted to suit um, our purposes. Now, if you take the Lanico strips, for example, they, by the way, uh, are coming four inch strips or 10 inch strips. These happen to be the four inch strips. And the idea is that when you're, let's say you're mounting a photograph or artwork, on a piece of mounting board say this for example we put that the idea is that you would the way they're designed is that you would basically attach the the adhesive here and then the clear plastic goes over the edge of the picture and uh, that then holds it in place there's no adhesive touching the picture at all it's just the archival um polyester that touches the photograph so it's um it's an, uh, it's basically just a, a good conservation method for that kind of picture of course we're not you're going to be using that w it that way so it has to be altered to uh, suit our purposes and to do that what we do is you have to basically flip it over so that you have the um what you want to do is this has to be has to be uh, turned over so it becomes a little clip for our pictures. Uh, what you want to do is have the adhesive side up. You want to basically line it up and you can pretty much eyeball this and then you take your Ulfa knife and what you do is you just very carefully score the score the mounting strip. Not too much. The idea is you don't want to go through but you want to be able to make it easy to fold and what you do is you just take that and you flip it over and hopefully you haven't gone too far in cutting the thing cutting the plastic this is where your bone folder comes in is just to help you fold it over and then once you've got that then what you want to do it is to cut it into um, uh, basically four three quarter inch strips so you would basically take a measurement and it doesn't have to be too accurate three quarter of an inch like that cut it off a little bit more okay there we have it there's one and what happens then you would take this and you put it over your picture and it will hold it in place once it's mounted like that and you'd have four then four little mounting strips on on each side now the thing about when you're using a Linico is that it's a fairly it's a little bit of a heavier polyester than the archival method strips and when you bend it over um, after you've scored it uh, it doesn't really fold flat against the picture it, it's more like a, a clip that uh, that sort of projects out. However, it's not really noticeable. It still looks pretty good, so it's definitely a, a worthwhile thing to consider. So, anyways, for for one picture, you would then need four of these little three quarter inch strips. Now, if you're using the archival methods strips, what you do is you where's my strip here? Okay, let's go to the strip. Now in this case, what the way they're meant to work is that the, the strip gets mounted onto your mounting board and then your piece of artwork would then slip under this. So in this case, again, uh, all that's touching the photograph or the, the artwork is the polyester itself. So there's not doing any damage. Uh, and then the tape is on the bottom side. That's what is, is uh, glued onto your mounting board. So there's no physical contact of the... Uh, of the uh, adhesive to the picture itself, to the artwork itself. It's uh, isolated from it, so that it's not gonna cause any damage to the actual artwork. Now, 
the, of course, the benefit of both of these techniques is that you're able to remove the artwork as well. If you have to do conservation to it or, or you just want to even change the picture, you can do that when you're using this sort of method. Anyway, so you've got that. That's how, how they're meant to work. However, that's not the way we want them to work. Uh, what has to happen is, now, in this case, the there's two things. First of all, the flap is obviously much too deep for a Polaroid. It's going to lap over the picture. So we have to trim that so it's only about one half of the width of the, of the white frame on the Polaroid print. And the other thing is that for some reason, the adhesive here is very far back from the edge. Uh, so what we need to do is put another strip of adhesive that's much closer to the, to the, to the mounting edge. Uh, so that when we attach it to our little mounting board, uh, that that it, it'll it'll hold it tight against the surface of the of the little mounting board. But we'll get to that in a minute. So, anyways, to cut off that little bit of excess there, again, what we do is we take a, a piece of a, a fairly thin card. Sometimes you, when you buy a cheap frame and it comes with a mat, um, a cheap mat, they're they're often cheap mats so they're quite thin uh, you could use that as a back and backup and that's as a matter of fact that's what this is it's just a, a cheap mat that came with a manufactured frame anyways what you do is you just place that over the edge try to get as tight as possible you take your ruler your steel ruler you place it over that edge and again you can do this just visually you don't need to go any complicated measurements here and Again, you get fairly close to the edge and just take your knife and cut along that. There we have it. So we've got that. Get rid of that piece of plastic. Get rid of this mat board. And there we have it. Now we've got a an edge that will overlap the edge of the hold the hold the photograph in place but it won't overlap the image area itself and this is a little bit thicker than I normally like it but it, you get the idea the next thing you do before you go any further is you take a piece of a piece of, um, of this uh, scrapbook tape and take it and you basically what you want to do is place it fairly close to the edge. You can get it fairly close to that mounting edge right there. And because you're not going to see it anyways. There we go. The closer the better, really. But it's something you can experiment with. Just then take it, trim off the edges. Trim off the edges. And the last thing I like to do with these archival strips is that this little piece of plastic that's beyond their piece of double-sided tape is totally unnecessary and it actually gets in the way when you're mounting um, Polaroid. So I just like to take that and just uh, uh, quickly trim it off as well. So that's what you're in left with is now a 10-inch strip of prepared mounting strips and from here all you have to do then is just uh, again measure three quarters of an inch over about and of course I would do I would do this a little bit more carefully because I would want all of my strips to be the same same width across the same three quarter inches across so I'd, I'd perhaps create a little jig so that I would make sure that I would get that just cut it off And there we have it. We have our prepared corners. Okay, we're getting there. That's the tough part, really. Now what we do is we take our little... There it is. We've got our little piece of mounting board here, which again is just slightly smaller than the, the uh, picture of the SX-70 photograph itself. What you need to do is take your scrap SX-70 photograph and you have to measure the midpoint of each side and then you want to put from there you want to then center your three quarter inches strip so you put three two little pencil marks on each side which indicates where you're going to mount your three quarter inch 
strips. So let's take that one strip here. This is the archival strip from archival method strip. And we mount it over here at the three quarter inch mark. And then I've attached four pieces of, of, um, of masking tape here. And I just roll those over just to hold that piece of mounting strip in place. And then I basically what I do is I just work my way around. I attach that. There we go. Two. Three. Four. And yes, we all we all have lots of scrap uh, Polaroid S670 pictures, so you'll you know, a ton of these around. And actually this tape, I've been using this tape for many, many pictures. So it really, once you have one, you'll be able to use it for, 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 for a lot of uh, uh, framing purposes. So you've got that all set up. Now you flip it over. And uh, the next step is to basically trim off all of these, take off all the backing here. So you're exposing the adhesive basically and technically you could I think just take off the uh, the backing for the uh, for the scrapbook tape that you, that you've applied here closer to the edge however what the heck it's there so you might as well just uh, Gives as much uh, adhesive holding power as possible. And again, you see that in all these cases, sometimes it's a little bit tricky to get this stuff off here. Okay, try it from that angle. Okay, got that. Sorry, that took a little bit longer than I really wanted. Okay, so now we got our, our thing with all four pieces exposed. The next step is just to take your, your uh, mounting piece, your four-ply piece that's slightly smaller, and just eyeball it over top so that you center it there. And then you press down firmly. To hold, get all that adhesive power working and you can flip it over and also press on your scrap photograph. You know, do all this stuff before you take off the scrap photograph and put in the real one. Okay, there we've got that done. Now the next step is um, we have our two um, small pieces of home core and I should have mentioned before that I've already attached um, a scrapbooking tape uh, on, on each of these pieces. So there's one, there's two here. So it Depending on which frame you're going to be using, uh, you might use one or two pieces to create a bigger offset. Now, for my IKEA frame, because it's a fairly deep frame, I'm going to be putting on two pieces of, of, um, of my foam core, uh, just because the, the frame is so deep that it, that it can't, can stand off that far. If you're using one of the, uh, uh, if you're using one of the, Michael's frames, for example, which are, are not that deep, then you would maybe just use one piece of foam core for that. And then again, really just a matter of eyeballing it on there, just centering it and placing it there. And you can see it's quite undercut here. And the reason for that is that especially for the Santa head frames, the Ikea frames, uh, it you want to make sure that if you're looking at the the frame from the side that you don't see the foam core because it can look fairly unattractive so there we have it we have our two t things there and now i what i have to do is which i should have done is to attach two more strips like that we're going to have to then mount this to the mounting board. 
There we go. Got that done. Again, you don't have to be too, too careful because nobody's going to see this. It's all going to be hidden. And it's not going to affect the archival quality of your framing at all. Now, now what we have to do is we have to mount it onto our four ply uh, mounting board that's going to go into the frame. Now, the trick here is somehow you want to be able to center this. And that can be, you could eyeball it, but it's really kind of hard to do that. So what I've done is I've created sort of a, a little template here that will help me center it. So basically it just, uh, it just aligns itself with the top right hand corner of the frame. This is a piece of one piece of foam core with an L shape. And then I've just basically attached uh, two, uh, two layers of foam core along here just to help me align it. Now what I can do is then just, I take this, I strip off the the backing. Strip off the backing. Now what I can do is just oh this stuff is really sticky. There we go. So let's just realign this again. Put this right here. Just line it up. And just press in place. There we have it. And that should be nicely centered. Again, we still got our scrap SX70 picture here. So we can just press like crazy. We don't really care about this picture at all. Now it's all done. So now what we do is roll back our masking tape. Carefully remove the uh, SX70 picture. Well, actually, you don't have to be careful with this one. It's the scrap one. Now you want to be careful with your the final print that you're going to use. And just slide it in like that. And the tricky part is just trying to get it to fit underneath that top piece. There we go. Ta-da! So there we have it. That's basically um, your mounted uh, piece of... Uh, your mounted photograph on the backing board. So now we go, let's go back to the frame here. Pull this out. Again, this is the IKEA frame with the little mount, the backing here. Now, these, these by the way, both the Michaels and the uh, and the IKEA frames. The idea is that there's this. Uh, there, this is the spacer itself. So you got the glass, or the in this case the glazing, which is the, this very thin piece of uh, acrylic plastic right here. Uh, the spacer goes in here, so that's going to be the space between the glass, the glazing, and your picture. Then you just take this picture, put it in here. There we go. And then we take, remember that this is the top, so we want to make sure that the mounting thing is at the top as well. We just poke this in here. There we go. And then this is where this is where our little screwdriver comes in just to bend down these little metal tabs uh, without destroying your fingers. Well my fingers are pretty dry. I'm in Manitoba here and it's very dry in the winter time and my fingers are just like cracking like crazy right now. Uh, uh, I'm not going to be a hand model anytime soon. There we go. Fold it down. Fold it down, and let me take a look at it first. Oh yes, there we go. There's our finished picture. So it's really quite quite nice. And again, you can do the same thing with the uh, with the uh, Michael's frame. This is the, just their little eight by ten frame. It also looks pretty good as well. It floats. It's just uh, got one piece of uh, foam core underneath it, so it's not floating quite as far away from the background but it still looks pretty, pretty nice. Uh, it, I think this one looks better on the wall just because it's so thinner when it's hanging on the wall. Um, this one, the Santa head, I think is looked quite good. Look, look at it, just, this is just standing up on, on its own uh, and you could easily have these, you could even stack two of them up on a shelf if you wanted to or a bunch of these and have them stacked up, it would look quite nice.
But before I let you go, I should show you what these framed pictures look like when they're actually hanging on the wall. So right here we have, of course, the uh, the IKEA frame that I was working on. You get an idea of what that looks like. You can see that because it's a it's a fairly deep frame, it does cast a shadow uh, depending on how far your lights are from the wall. I have pot lights that are only about a, a foot and a half away, so it would probably be better if they were a little bit further away from the wall. Uh, now this is the, the Michaels 8 inch by 10 inch frame and you can see it's a much shallower frame and a very small, much smaller space in there and it doesn't cast so much of a shadow on the inside. So it just gives you another idea of maybe what would be the best approach depending on where you're going to frame your pictures. And third, I have a, another variation it's just to show you what you can do maybe playing with a, a different colored frame and a different colored background. In this case, we have a, uh, a black, uh, another a black IKEA frame actually. You can't get these anymore, but, but it gives you an idea. Uh, and instead of using a white mounting board, I've got a sort of colored mounting board back there. And you can see how it sort of sets off the frame in a different sort of way. So you have to pick and choose what's going to work best for your particular picture and your particular presentation. Anyways, I hope that helps a bit and I look forward to seeing you in the next uh, episode of Presenting Polaroids.